other news this morning. This morning, nearly 35 years ago, British band Bros shot to fame, selling an estimated 60 million records worldwide. Brothers Matt and Luke Goss becoming the youngest band to headline Wembley before then each going solo. Now Matt is gearing up to release his fifth solo album, and he sat down to tell me all about it. Well, Matt, you've got a new single out, so you're a very busy man at the moment. Congratulations. Uh, tell us all about it. I really am really proud of this album. And the first single is Somewhere to Fall. When you're alone. decided if I want to see Australia again and I want to see Tokyo and Berlin and, 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 and keep playing like venues like the O2 in London, um, I wanted to write the best pop record of my life and I just saturated my mind during lockdown. Do you feel confident that you have written the best pop album of your life? Without question. This is the best album of my life. So The Beautiful Unknown is the best pop record I've ever made. Throughout the pandemic, over the last 18 months, we've all been forced to spend a lot of time inside, at home. It's been a time of, I suppose, a lot of introspection as well. Do you feel as though that has helped you to shape this album? Yeah, I think that's a good point. We've had to face certain things, certainly in me, the loss of my mother and my loss of my sister and just certain things that were unavoidable. Um, and when you work, work, work like I do, 120 shows a year, you don't really have much time to reflect or grieve. How have you coped with, with lockdowns and restrictions and this quiet life that you would have been forced to live for the last couple of years? Because you've been living large for the best part of 40 years. Well, I just contributed. That's what I did. I, I raised a load of money to help uh, 70,000 meals for the NHS, for the, for the doctors and the nurses. I released a single in the UK and all proceeds went to, to raising money for the NHS. Some people want it all, but I don't want nothing at all. If it ain't you, baby. So during COVID, I actually was, I spent a great deal of time in the studio and actually use my joy and my pain. I have a tattoo that says, never waste good agony. So I try to transform, you know, my deeper feelings into joy and, and turn it into music that people could relate to. So let's wind back the clock if we can for a moment. 35 years ago, the world was in the grips of bros mania. And you were so young, you know, at the time when everything was taking yeah. off. How, how do you look back on that time in your life? Some of the greatest memories of my life, not just from Bros or from touring. We, we, we did four complete world tours and Australia to this day is still for both me and my brother. Without question, the most extraordinary experiences of our life were in, were in Australia, you know, the way that the people treated us to the experiences themselves, you know, the trouble we got into, also the willingness of the Australians to let us get into trouble. We got into a lot of trouble and had a lot of fun and it was very decadent and you go the other side of the world and I think the biggest thing for us, me being just born in a London, being a London boy, coming to Australia and I was like, is anyone going to even know who we are? You know, it's like, and you would get off and there were 11,000 people at Sydney, uh, Sydney Airport and uh, it was really, really quite extraordinary to see. <laughs> You've got, you know, 16 million records sold with Bros. You've done your time on the Las Vegas stri Strip. You've got a new album about to, you know, spin uh, spin minds and uh, and hearts all over the world. Of course, what's next for you? What else do you have in the pipeline? To be honest with you, I'm just so like even just been able to, like you know, like you said before, we've all been in lockdown. We've been and the thought of actually hearing that Australia might open up at the end of October. And my, my team especially is extremely excited about that territory because they know how much it means to me. Frankly, I cannot wait to get back. Well, we can't wait to have you back. It's not long now. You can do seven days home quarantine soon, so that's a little bit more bearable than the current situation. Oh. <laughs> I'll come to yours and we'll have, we'll have like a lot of cup of tea. We'll have, some cu we'll have a cup of tea and watch some Netflix. We've got a spare room, but we've also got a six-month-old and a toddler, so I hope you don't mind being woken up at night. Good. I'll be like this. I'm in this, in this what do you say, Merlot jacket? Yeah. I'll be like this. <laughs> Before I let you go, you've just landed in London. Um, you're based in LA these days. How much do you look forward to a bit of time with your brother? 
This TV in my hotel suite right now was actually, they put a PlayStation in it for me. And me and my brother, after I'm done with promo but all over the world, I will be playing PlayStation with my brother for at least an hour. So yeah, that's our little connected moments. Hey, congratulations on the new music, Matt. It's such a pleasure chatting with you. Much love. Love you, Oz. Such a pleasure chatting to you. Take care. I mean, he plays PlayStation with his brother every I know, night. isn't that sweet? They talk every day, they connect over PlayStation, so they're still joined at the hip, or at least the PlayStation. And for the record, <laughs> I did ask him for the details of the trouble that he got into in and Australia, and he would not share. He said he'd tell me when he comes down under. So. I, I think you've got yourself a babysitter there. It sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what kind of influence he'll have on my boys, but I... They'll start a band, <laughs> we know that. Perfect. And Matt's new single, Somewhere to Fall, is out now, and his oh. album, The Beautiful Unknown, will be released on November 19th. His best yet, he says. Still ahead on Today Extra, a global outage Facebook...